Hello there everybody, this is John and welcome back to Harvester Part 2. In the last one we set off a nuclear holocaust and today we are going to go and see what else, what other havoc we can cause. What's this? A plastic cup. Window. He forgot to put papers out, so Paper Boy threw some papers in to his his room. <laughs> Wait, what? With Harvest Dead Center. Yes, Postmaster no. Boyle. Ah, what sorry. can I do for you today? Mm, sorry, youngster, we're out of applications right now. Come on, you must have one around here somewhere. Well, I do have the master, but you can't write on that. And I only make copies once a month on the button, regular as clockwork. Why can't you copy more? I mean, it's not that extreme, but... It's yeah. not the effort, son. It's the principle. We well, must adhere like to effort. our standards. They're all that stand between civilization and chaos. I'm sorry, you'll just have to come back in a month, same as anyone else. And even then, I can't guarantee you'll get an application. The line is always long, and there are never enough to go around. It's very important that I get in quickly. That's what they all say. Postmaster Boyle, I'll just die if I don't get into the lodge. Literal. You can't make an exception, young man. It just wouldn't be right. Oh, Next okay. time you post, don't forget the zip code. Okay, okay. Three clocks, three different times, but nothing indicating where exactly. Why would you have the the thing out saying lodge applications if you can't uh, provide a lodge application? All right. Uh. Now, let's see the barber shop. Uh, I remember this place, and it's it's. A lot of conversations and it is boring. They're so boring. I don't want to. I don't want to talk to them. They're not essential to the story. <laughs> They're just it's crazy people. I don't even have money, so I don't know why I'm in here. Can I help you, dear? Who are you? This is Phelps General Store. So who would that make me? Maybe you need to go back to Gein Memorial and have Miss Whaley teach you about logic. I'm fuzzy on a lot of things these days. My memory's gone. Shaw, you always were a kidder, Steve. I'm serious. I need some help. Well, they say a sharp blow to the head is a good thing for amnesia. In which case, I'd recommend Miss Whaley again. Then again, they say a good scare can jog the memory. In which case, I'd advise you to visit the sergeant at arms over at the lodge. That man gives me the willies. Speaking of willies, how's your father? Don't know. Haven't seen him. Care to buy anything today? Uh, no. Okay, dear. You check back if you decide there's anything you want. I'll be happy to help you. Dead roaches. Oh, wow. Oh, wait. Ah, I don't care if it's that exterior or interior. Doesn't really change anything. Still roaches. Alright, now, your house. Uh, pot stand, residence. Uh, anything special? It's too high. Examine it. Reflection. That's weird. There he is, my future son-in-law. And how's he doing today? What brings him to the Pottstown household? Huh? Huh? Sadness. <laughs> what a card. Would I kid about something like that? Why won't you believe me? Well, you always were a kidder, Steve. Your mother just telephoned us about your latest shenanigans. Isn't that right, Mrs. Pottstown? Sure did, Mr. Pottstown. You little rascal. Imagination's a swell thing to have, in small amounts. Man needs to keep his feet on the ground, especially if he's getting married. <laughs> Tell me, is your father feeling better? 
Is he going back to the slaughterhouse anytime soon? Uh, yeah. No. There's a water ring here, but that's most likely on top of the TV, so why would... Was anyone close enough for that for a long time? Hello, Steve. Have you floss today? I don't use floss. Honestly, you men can insult a woman without even knowing you've done it. What a horrible thing to say. You're both standing around baking cookies. Same cut of dress. Same pearls. So bizarre. There's nothing bizarre about baking cookies. The Harvest Charity Bake Sale is Friday, you know, and by gosh, Mrs. Marvin Poston Jr. can be counted on to do her share. Uh, Give my okay. regards to your parents. That crack runs the entire length of the ceiling. Bushes are for vineyards. Ice box is locked. Cabinets are so so. Okay. Sorry. You'll have to ask Mrs. Potsdam for permission to see Stephanie. She's in the kitchen. Why is he so sad? Hello, dear. She's upstairs. Go right on up. Just remember, she's grounded until the wedding. Uh, me, I can do this. Mr. Potsdam feels there's too much at stake to allow Stephanie to run around loose. She doesn't want to get married either, huh? Are you saying you don't want to marry my daughter? Yes. I don't know your daughter, Mrs. Potsdam. Why is she grounded? Afraid she'll run away before the wedding? No. She's as delighted as we are about the wedding. Every bit as delighted as we are. But she might get hit by a car or a falling piano or who knows what. Mr. Potsdam wants us all to be one happy family. And he doesn't want to risk anything happening at the last minute. Yeah, but all those things can happen after you're married, too. Not a chance, Steve. Mr. Potsdam wouldn't like it. If you'd like to see her, it's fine with me. Go upstairs and turn right. Now, excuse me. I'm trying to get ready for the bake sale. Good for you. Give my regards to your parents. Turn right. That's not right. No, no, no. There you go. Okay. All right, all right. Let's see what this one is. Closet. All right. Radiator, whatever. Who are you? What are you doing in my room? Haven't you heard? We're getting married. So, you're the one. Steve, isn't it? You mean, you don't know me? I mean, I don't know anyone. I don't remember anything. How many times do I have to say it? Just one, Stephanie, because I can't remember a damn thing either. Really? Oh God, I thought it was just me. You're not alone. Can you tell me what's going on here? Those people downstairs have locked me in my room. They say I'm grounded until the wedding. I don't know why those people... The this. wedding is only three weeks away. Not much time to get to know each other, is it? Uh... Thanks. <laughs> but I wouldn't marry anyone with things... You know, as they are. Yeah, well, they can't force us to go through with it. If it comes down to it, we just won't take the vow. I don't think anything in Harvest is that simple. Too many people are determined that we get hitched. Why? Potsdam wants the meat your father promised him. Your parents want to force you to settle down. Mrs. Potsdam wants to have the wedding in the lodge. Me? I just want to escape. Okay. Everything in Harvest seems to revolve around this damned lodge. This Order of the Harvest Moon. They're responsible for this insane bake sale that's coming, and for the Harvest Blood Drive, too. 
When people talk about the lodge, it's always in this hushed, reverent tone. Mom keeps telling me that women can't join, but she keeps pressuring me to get you to join. She's not the only one who wants me to sign on with the lodge. That's probably the worst thing you could do. You think the lodge is some kind of trap? I think all of Harvest is a trap. If that's true. Maybe joining the lodge is the way out. Look, why not explore the town a little? I can't get out of here, but if I could, that's what I'd do. Maybe you can figure out what's happening here without going anywhere near the lodge. You're really afraid of the lodge, aren't you? I look at that building, all lit up at night, and I get scared. So how many nights have you I mean, died? look at the damn thing. Seem like a harmless bunch of masons to you? Yes. Come back and visit me soon, okay? Why are you such a totally different form of window in this room? These are round, the ones downstairs are square, the ones outside are square. Do you want the bubble effect? And that's not the exact same because that has framing inside of it, so that doesn't work. Okay, abandoned house. Ah, uh, this must be the wasp woman. Old cards, using stuff. Okay, hello. It's not often that I get visitors. Are you the wasp woman? I am Tetsuo Krum. The ignorant of harvest called me the wasp woman. A pejorative, no doubt. Born of fear and a poverty of imagination. I don't understand. The politics of honey. The Judeo-Christian rites of sacrifice and conventional taboos against unbridled pleasure are all responsible for the prejudice against wasps. <laughs> yes, a great deal of pleasure. The wasp is a sensual being, not a laborer. Hedonistic instead of industrial. Some think them quick to anger. In truth, they are easily swayed to ecstasy. They penetrate your flesh, and the muscular contractions in their thorax as they pump venom could be likened to the muscular contractions of ejaculation. Each painful welt, an act of love. I don't want wasps to love me. When a bee stings, it rips itself apart and dies for its audacity. This appeals to those raised worshipping a god that demands sacrifice and atonement. But the wasp is promiscuous. They are not as sympathetic to the masses because they don't die when they sting. They live to sting another day, and they take pleasure from it. Yeah, and the uh, bees keep the world going while wasps try to kill bees. Therefore, destroying the planet. Okay, okay. Goodbye. Or I kill you or something. Yeah! Oh, no! No, I'm just... Sorry, I missed that. Ah, no! I just, just was trying to kill more of her. Ah! That's not good. Not good at all. I didn't get a... <laughs> okay. Hello, Steve. How's the husband-to-be? Other than having no memory, I guess I'm alright. All right? You should be ecstatic, considering what you're getting into, if you haven't gotten into it already. Speaking of which, I heard Stephanie was grounded. Her daddy's worried about getting his meat. Though if I were him, I'd be more concerned about Stephanie getting some meat. Uh, right. And you are... 
You always were a kidder, Steve. I'm Mr. Johnson, remember? Glad you stopped by. Just got finished waxing the tucker. I could use a little relaxation. But since Edna's not here, I might as well talk to you. Uh, I don't care to talk. Bye now. Okay. Nope. All right. Uh. Yeah, this place is weird. I mean, this is a completely optional place in the game, but oh no, no, he, oh. Okay. Very weird. Don't know if I'm allowed to show any of this on YouTube, but it's, uh, let's, uh, let's talk to a glue. Okay. You can't have that, Stephen. I oh, need it for my work. And may I say you're a lewd young man for attempting to steal it. Indeed. Oh, and no. have you anything I could hold as security? Security? Like what? Money? I'm afraid that's not good enough. I need that glue for my work. You must present me with something significant if you'd have me part with it. I don't... I don't... I'm... No, I just... Stephen, okay. who are you? I am Daniel Moynihan, <laughs> mortician and proprietor of the Wayward Hotel. Most people ask me why I don't remember their names. Well, you always were a kidder, Steve. Besides, as one who deals with the dead, I try not to involve myself in the affairs of the living. Your loss of memory is of no concern to me, true or false. Ironic, considering my recent involvement in a charity event. What are you talking about? My complaints were central to the scheduling of the upcoming Harvest Bake Sale. I'm gratified the Order of the Harvest Moon got involved. The proceeds will certainly help cover my losses. Losses? It seems that, like some elephant's graveyard, people of low station come to harvest to die. They simply drop dead, penniless, and they all need burials. God knows, by putting these people up at the Wayward Hotel, I do more than my fair share. So why must I pay for the coffins and burial materials as well? My losses to the dead are substantial. Hopefully the bake sale will offset some of them. Why not just cremate? As owner of the only hotel in town, I do my best to accommodate any hobo who straggles into town, vacancies permitting. I really don't recall. We get so many low-life dregs passing through here, I can't remember every little death that occurs. Huh. Are there that many? As I said, sliced open on a mortician's slab, every corpse looks the same. Red. And juicy. But surely you'd remember if these deaths were an unusual occurrence. You sound like you're launching some sort of investigation, Stephen. That would be most unwise. Okay, okay. I'd say it's been a pleasure, but I find the company of the living so wearisome. Okay, okay, let's get out of here. Alright, now let's go down here. Whoa! Dust. Oh, wait. Huh? Oh, okay. Empty. Good. That thing's getting uh, closer. Can I go to the left? No. Alright, alright. We're getting to be long on this video. And, uh, I only want it to be so long. So, yeah. Trying to keep my legs under so many minutes. But in the next one, we will be doing more exploring of the town. Sounds kind of boring, but I will eventually try to do a semi speed run of this game in order just just for myself, really, to because I know when I played it before, I was able to get it down to like 30 minutes or less. I, I don't remember exactly how long, but it was really quick. So, I uh, thank you for watching. I hope to see you in the next one, and goodbye.